Welcome artists to Monet Cafe Studio. In this pastel painting tutorial, I'm calling it Whispers of Light. I'll teach you techniques and strategies for painting light in soft pastel. We begin with an absolutely beautiful, luminous, and light bathed reference image from unsplash.com. If you are a patron on my Patreon page, you will have already received this lesson as a full real-time tutorial, and I take you behind the scenes. I show you my strategies for choosing colors from a reference image and so much more. The surface that I used for this pastel painting is called Pastel Matte. It's a water-friendly pastel painting surface that takes a lot of layers. The reason I wanted to use a water-friendly surface is I am using a technique with, it's not body spray, it's actually some alcohol and water in this little spritzer bottle. And I did something different this time though. I wanted to play around with some different blending instruments. So I literally used a sponge at one point and also a fan brush. Here is the completed dried underpainting, and if you're new to this channel or pastel painting, you may be thinking, wow, that's a mess. But it's actually a loose and energetic underpainting that can often set the mood for a painting that leans towards the style of Impressionism. And I love starting a painting this way because we are giving ourselves a roadmap. I already have my general values in, and I wanted to start with a nice neutral palette. And what I'm doing here is just sketching in some of my concepts as to flower placement. I'm looking at my reference image, and I'm just using a little stick of pastel. It's called a Prismacolor New Pastel. And these are just loose and energetic marks, especially at the beginning phases of a pastel painting. And even though this reference image is bathed in this beautiful light, I still need to establish my darks as I'm doing here. And it may seem a little strange to be focusing on darks right now when this actual tutorial is about painting light. But I wanna describe a concept for you from a previous tutorial of mine. In this tutorial teaching about value, I showed different examples of how the same color can have a different degree of brightness based on what surface you put it on. Here on the very dark surface, it appears very bright. On the gray or taupe surface, it's kind of a medium value. And on a light surface, it appears darker. Can you see that? Look at the one on the black surface. Do you see how much lighter it looks? Well, that's why we often will lay down a value that's a little bit darker before adding our final highlights. Here I'm doing the same thing with actual white. Again, watch how bright it looks when it is juxtaposed or put on a much darker surface. This is called value contrast. So I definitely need to get in some of my darks first to be able to layer down some of the lighter or brighter colors and they will have more impact. They will appear lighter because of the contrast. And while this is just layering some of the darks in areas that are typically darker, like foreground grasses, you know, deep down in the roots and also in trees, trees are typically darker in value because they're vertical, the sun isn't hitting on the sides. But where you're really gonna see this concept come to life is when I go to paint the flowers. If you look at the reference image, the flowers are what your brain would say as white. So when I was first painting with pastels, I would have just gone for white or a light color or yeah, maybe some of them are in shadow, I'll use a gray. And I'm going to show you how I will be initially choosing some values for these flowers that are not what you would expect. I'm not gonna go for those lightest colors at the initial stages. And again, that's because I want my lights to show up. Also, I may not be using some of the colors that you would initially think. Again, when I was first starting, I would go maybe for whites or blues or beiges, but because the scene is warm and I really wanted to capture the essence of light, you'll see me choosing some colors for the flowers that may not be what you would expect. Real quickly, before we continue this lesson, I'd like to ask you if you would please go ahead and like this video, give it a thumbs up. That really does help YouTube to share it more. It means so much, even though it's such a little thing, I would really appreciate it. And also, if you would like the full version of this with lots of real time and lots of commentary, consider becoming a patron of mine on my Patreon page. It's real easy, it's only $5 a month. You can cancel at any time and you get all the goodies. Plus you get to join a beautiful family of artists and I get to see your work. We have lots of fun. And now you'll see me continuing to layer some values that are a little bit darker 
and a combination of some colors that are warm and cool. I've put down some greens, I've put down, this one's a blue, and I typically put the blues and purples in areas that are more in shadow. And I'm doing the same thing with the tree. This tree had more light on the left side where the sun was kind of setting. I'm gonna show you a, a neat technique to capture that golden light on that tree in a minute. So now I'm getting to some of my warmer colors. Notice I'm still not going very light. Even though in the reference image, some of these grasses that are reaching up high are very light in value. With pastel painting, we typically work dark to light. We have this beautiful ability to layer, especially if you're working on a sanded or a, a professional surface like this. Pastel matte actually isn't very sanded, but it does take a lot of layers. And trust me, I did not understand any of this when I first started painting with pastels. I didn't have any resources. I don't even know if YouTube was a thing. It's probably about 18 years ago now. And that's how this channel started. I started sharing my journey in learning pastel painting and thus Monet Cafe was born. All right, so I'm getting to this distant field and I'm definitely interpreting the color here, but I'm keeping the values similar to what I see in the reference image and even though I couldn't see it I had the concept in my mind of a kind of a road curving around I thought it made a great compositional element to pull the viewer into the painting it was very light back there in the distance because we've got a setting sun now when a sun is setting lower in the sky like this it's going to affect the color and value of the things immediately around it. So right now I wanted to get into like some distant trees and typically when things are much further away, they cool off. That's why I put some of the uh, cooler colors for those distant trees, but you're gonna see me warm them up in a minute with the process of layering because I've got a sun setting back there and it's definitely gonna have a warming influence on those trees and the large tree as well. All right. I'm starting to develop the flowers, and I realized after getting in just a few of these, I do still make mistakes, <laughs> just so you know, after painting as long as I have, I realized I had already gotten them in too lightly. So you'll see me um, kind of changing up that lower flower to the, to the right. But you can see with the other ones, I have gotten in some colors you might not expect, especially some of those blue colors, and that's a lavender color. But that little blue, it's kind of like a bluish teal, was a great color because I noticed that within the flowers themselves, even though the perimeters were lighter with the sun shining, like backlighting behind them, um, flowers, especially such as these little seed pods reaching up over the horizon, there's a little bit of a darkness to it. And so I have to capture that bit of darker value first before I add my lighter values, just like you saw in my little example from the previous tutorial. Of course, you're probably thinking these flowers look very strange right now, um, and they're gonna continue to look strange as I'll add some peachy and salmon colors to them, but eventually you're going to see them come to life when I add the lighter values on the top of these values and colors. And you can see that just a little bit before this part, I added some of the warmth to the grasses. Here I'm doing the same, but I'm adding it on top of some of the darks. I like to think of it this way. I'm painting from the ground up. I like to paint the deepest, darkest values of the earth and the ground first, and then I layer my lights on top as if the sun is shining on top of the elements, which indeed it does. That's actually how it works. All right, now I'm adding, oh, some pretty blues. I just thought that would be a nice um, touch. And this pretty little sagey green, well, it's not really sage, it's just kind of a muted yellowy green, um, gave a little bit of that hint of green that I was seeing within the flowers as well. There was some warmth deep in some of those grasses, so I added a little bit of a deeper orange and rusty color. And now I want to teach you more about how sunlight affects objects, especially when the sun is low in the horizon like this. You can see in the reference image, if you examine it, that the this left side of the tree is indeed lighter than the right side. Of course, the sun's near it, but it's also warmer. And I am exaggerating that with some warmth. It looks a little funny right now. I still needed to get in a little darker value so I could layer some of these greens on top. And now can you see how that darker value even though I'm covering it up to a degree, it still has an influence. And I love this part. This is called negative painting. It's really going to shape this tree and bring it to life. All right, so now I'm adding even more color. My values are gradually getting lighter on these flowers. 
And here's where I'm adding those peachy and salmon colors really to get the sense of warmth that's coming from the sun. So the colors that are in the sky in the distance, those are the same colors and values that are going to be reflected onto these flowers. Now I didn't like this flower in the foreground here. It was facing the viewer too much. It felt like it was just looking at the viewer. So I erased it out and this is just a stiff bristle brush and I used it to also soften some of the areas of the painting and some of the flowers. And now I'm carving more into this tree. Can you see the tree is taking shape now? And it really feels like that sun is having a just a warm hue cast upon its branches. And here is where I am reforming this flower. Like I said, I just felt like it needed to be looking away towards the distant sunset. So I gave it some shadow on the back with some beautiful greens and blues. And now I'm doing the same thing, basically layering more of those warm tones on the top. And then I'm going to turn on the lights, so to speak, for the rest of these flowers. And this is the stage for me when it gets really fun. I have everything established that I need to, and it's time to bring the sunshine into this painting. I wanted to add a few other interesting elements, so I used that pretty um, bluish uh, turquoisey color and uh, just sprinkled in some little elements to the painting that would draw the viewer in. I did add a little more warmth down in the roots as well. And I also am starting to add some of the stems for the flowers and uh, bring in some more grasses. I apologize for the times that I'm working with my right hand. I am left-handed, but most left-handed people like me are quite ambidextrous. But I do recommend that you sometimes work with your non-dominant hand. I think you'll find it makes some very interesting marks. And here I'm adding this pretty little light green just to some of the tops of some of these flowers, um, kind of in the middle ground, in the distance, and very lightly down in some of the buried flowers. But for the flowers that are more in shadow, you're gonna see that I don't add the lightest lights that you're gonna see me get to in just a minute. Now's where I'm adding some of those tall grasses that were a little lighter. And here's a close up of that pretty sagey green that I used again. I wanted to keep these flowers so nice and delicate. Here I brought in a little bit more depth to some of those deeper grasses and often that uh, just gives a richness to the foreground. I'm using little Prismacolor New Pastels often to make some grasses. Now I thought using this dark purple that I used originally at the beginning would be a great dark element to bring in some just some nice compositional contrast of values. And here I'm adding a few more grasses. These Prismacolor New Pastels are excellent for making grasses. And here is the final painting. Again, it is full of life and light, but I didn't copy the reference image. I used it as a source of inspiration and gave it my own interpretation with a warm glow. Be sure to check the description of this video where I'll have product links to many of the products I use. I'll have a link to my Patreon page if you would like to get all of the goodies. And I really hope and pray that you learned a lot from this. I have hundreds of videos on this channel, so please subscribe and come and join the learning and fun. All right, everyone, God bless and happy painting.